Welcome back to Johnny Builds. Today I am building this reading nook bench with cushions and book storage. Let's get started. For this project, I used two sheets of maple veneer 3 quarter inch Pure Bond plywood that I picked up at Home Depot. The bench is going to be 18 inches deep and I ripped the two sheets of plywood into four 18 inch wide panels. Here's a quick cut list for the bench I made. You can easily adjust this for whatever size you need. You need two panels cut to 55 inches long, one at 53 and a half by 14 inches, two at 18 by 18, six at 18 by 14, and two at 18 by four. And here I am just measuring out and breaking down the sheets of plywood. Since my jig was already set to 18 inches, I used it to also cross cut the seat back panels here. I used my crosscut sled to cut down all the remaining pieces over on my table saw. I set my blade to 37 degrees to make the beveled cuts on the two seat back panels. Everything was cut to size now and I could begin assembling the two seat back panels. I just used glue and a few brad nails here. At this point I had not decided on the overall length of the bench, so here I am laying out the seat backs and using the foam I ordered for a reference. I used the seat backs as a template to trace the center supports and I cut these off camera on my bandsaw. These will get attached later. There is a center support that runs the length of this bench and here you see me laying out the dados for the half laps that connect the two dividers. I used my dado stack so I would have cleaner cuts, but you could also use a jigsaw if you don't have a dado stack. I had to chisel out where the dado blade couldn't reach, but this was fairly easy and only took a few minutes. Here I added pocket holes to the center support and all of these will be hidden on the back side of the bench. I cut three spacer blocks to hold the center dividers in place while I glued and brad nailed them all together. Next I attach the seat backs to the upper panel, tacking them in place with a few brad nails. I flipped the workpiece over and before driving in the screws I pre-drilled and countersunk everything. Here I'm attaching the dividers to the center support and these got glued in place. I laid out the top and lined it up over the center divider. Here you can see how all the pocket holes are hidden on one side and this will eventually get covered up with a backer board. I glued and attached the end pieces with pocket screws. Here I added the base and drove in all the remaining pocket screws. And of course once everything was assembled I couldn't help but jumping up there and trying it out for myself. I 
I moved on to milling up the maple board that will be used for the face frame. And here I'm cutting it down on my table saw so it will fit on my joiner. Next I jointed one face and one edge. I cut this board down into half inch strips over on the table saw. I took these strips over to the planer to clean up the opposite face and then planed down the width to match the plywood. I attached the face frame with wig glue and used tape to hold everything in place while the glue dried. I had the face frame wrap around the side and for these pieces I attached them with wood glue and a few drops of CA glue. I hit it with the activator and these dried almost instantly. Once everything was dry, I could come back and trim the overhanging pieces with my flush cut saw. I sanded and rounded over the face frame with my orbital sander and then the entire bench got sanded up to 220. Here I am cutting down the half inch plywood that's used for the bottom of each cushion. I first saw this cushion making technique in the Crafted Workshop Modern Sofa Build and I definitely encourage you to check out that video, I'll leave a link down in the description below. I attached the cushions with spray adhesive and used an electric knife to trim these to size. I cut out a bevel on all the cushions to give them a rounded over appearance. I attached the batting material and pulled it tight and straight before stapling it in place. I moved on to attaching the fabric to these cushions. I would start from the middle, throw in a couple staples, work my way to the edge, and finish at the corners, making sure to trim them down a little bit. I finished the bench with three coats of clear shellac sanding between each coat, and then I added a coat of paste wax after that. I really like using shellac here because it dries super fast and this whole finished process took about 2-3 hours and looked great. I hit the cushions with a couple coats of scotch guard to protect them and then I attached all the cushions with screws making sure to countersink all the holes. I couldn't sink the screws for the seat back cushions all the way flush, so I made these tabs out of some leftover maple to hide the screw heads. And then these just get attached with a little bit of CA glue. I attached four rubber feet to the underside corners. I cut down some eighth inch plywood on the table saw for the back of board, and I just attached this with some brad nails using my staple gun. Over on the bandsaw, I cut out the backer boards for the seat back uprights. And these also got attached with a few brad nails. Just like that, the reading nook was complete. I'm very happy with the way this project came out and my daughter was a huge fan. So I just want to say thanks for checking it out. Please hit that thumbs up button if you like this project and please subscribe to see what I'm working on next here at Johnny Builds. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.